Welcome to Better View. In this video, we are going to do a quick revision of processing of feed. In the exam, they may ask about improvement of roughage, improvement of grains, and feed processing or processing of grains or processing of roughage. So the basic principle is the same, but some examples and some processes may differ between the three questions. Okay. So first, let us look at what are the various methods of feed processing. First, we have physical, chemical, and then biological. So in physical methods, we used various methods which physically affect the feed. Okay, so we can decrease the size of the food particles, which can increase the density like that. In chemical methods, we use certain chemicals which are used for improvement of the quality of the feed. And, sec and the last is biological in which we use certain microbes for enhancement of the quality of feed. Okay, so the first is physical method, which include chaffing. In chaffing, the long particles or the long pieces of the feed, uh, mainly roughage, is shaved or cut into one to four centimeter long pieces and it increases the feed intake and it also increases the surface area available for the action of enzymes. Okay, then we have bhusa making. The concept is same during threshing of the dry crops, the long straw is reduced to five centimeter long pieces or to fine dust. So this is one uh, disadvantage that in bhusa making, dust may also be formed and dust is basically wastage of feed then we have grinding okay here the feed stuff is first cut into four to five centimeter length pieces and then by using pressure grinders or shearing grinders or hammer mill or roaster we will grind the feed okay one problem with this one is that in case of certain grains if you grind them too small what will happen the area is to uh, the surface area is too much plus the particle size is very small so what will happen the retention in the gut is very less okay so even if you are digesting uh, the feed stuff the time for absorption is not enough so it is one disadvantage of grinding especially too much grinding okay then we have decortication it is mainly done for the grain okay particularly groundnut and cotton seed sorry not for the grain concentrate so in groundnut we have one cortical, right? So this is grounded. These are the nuts and the stuff, the husk, which is above. If you remove it, it is called decortication. In cotton seed, decortication is very much important. Why? Because it is the process of removal of anti-nutritional factor, that is gossypol. So the cotton seed has a covering, which is called cortical. And it is a very hard covering. It contains gossypol. The seed itself also contains gossypol. But if we are removing the hard shell, then some amount of the NF is decreased. Second thing, that by removing the outer hard covering, we are improving the digestibility of the grain or the seed. Okay? Because the covering is very hard to digest. Then we have cracking and dry rolling. Here we use rollers. Then we have crimping, which use corrugated rollers. Then crumbling, which decreases the size of uh, pellets. Okay? Then we have densification. In densification, there are several methods like baling. Here we use the compression of the loose straw to 0.5 to 1 meter cube using baling machine. So we basically make uh, we basically make 1 2.5 meter cube blocks. Okay. Then we have block making. Here the size is different. Okay, 10 into 25 into 5 centimeter cube blocks. And in block making, binder is required. So binders are basically feed additives. Then we have palleting. In palleting as well, we need pellet binders in like bentonite. Then wafering. In wafering, we make 5 to 8 centimeter wafers. Okay, so these are all the process of densification. Then we have popping. It is used for grains. Grains should have 10 to 14 percent moisture for popping. They are heated at 370 to 425 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 seconds. This is important. Then roasting, it is done at 149 to 148 degrees Celsius, right? It is a form of dry heat. Then micronizing. Micronizing is also very important. Here we use radiation. Okay, particularly infrared light or infrared radiation, which will break the glycosidic bond between, uh, between starch and improves the digestibility. Then we have steam processing, where we use steam washing, where we will wash the shaft straw dipped in water for two hours then water is decanted and the straw is fed to the animals then we have reconstitution so in our homes 
we be, uh, generally eat sprouts right so deconstitution means sprouting we will take water then put the dry grain with 10% moisture into them and we will increase the moisture content of the grains up to 25 to 30% after that we will store it in anaerobic conditions okay <coughs> so what happens when we increase the moisture content the grain will germinate and the germinate con uh, grain contain higher contain higher nutrient content okay so it is used for improvement of the digestibility of the grains then we have something called bypass nutrient technology okay it is used for the high yield animals because whatever feed material that our, uh, that we are giving to the animal it is getting digested and utilized by the microbes present in the rumen and the microbes then they will produce products like microbial protein which is utilized by the animal so for high yield uh, animals which have very high nutritional demands whatever high quality feed we are giving to it it is all getting degraded right so there's a wastage of feed so what do we do we make bypass nutrients or bypass feed stuff what is the meaning of bypass it bypasses or it escapes or it evades the rumen okay so it may include bypass proteins bypass starch bypass fat chelated minerals and vitamins okay for your exams you have to mainly look at bypass protein so in bypass proteins or protected proteins what are the various methods so first so whatever protein that an animal consumes it is divided into two categories microbial protein which is digested by the ruminal micro uh, microbes and second is rumen undegradable protein okay so we basically make the protein rumen undegradable using certain processes like heat treatment and formaldehyde treatment there are some naturally protected proteins so these proteins have low protein degradability in the rumen but of course it is not 100% so you cannot rely on them but the examples include maize gain uh, maize gluten meal fish meal cotton seed cake etc heat treatment is done at 150 degrees celsius for 2 to 4 hours okay then we have esophageal groove it is present in young animals okay so it is an anatomical structure which will bypass whatever feed is the uh, calf or whatever the young animal is it is consuming it will directly go from the esophagus to the abomasum then we have formaldehyde treatment where we use 3 to 4 kg of formalin and 100 kg of the crude protein okay at the ph 6 then we have post rumen infusion basically we make a fistula this is the animal okay this is the rumen and this is the intestine so after rumen we will make a fistula basically it is a hole and through this hole we will give the feed okay there's a very big disadvantage first you had you need a surgeon to do this, uh, to do the surgery second thing it is not a very humane method third thing the animal is not going to feel satiated why because the rumen is empty it feels that it is hungry even though you are giving it food okay so it is basically only used for research purposes okay it is used at research level but for exams you have to remember it then we have encapsulation of the proteins so you can use <coughs> certain substances like uh, like fatty acids along with carbonate kaolin lecithin and glucose and you can you uh, make capsule out of these which are filled with whatever nutrient you want to encapsulate like protein okay then we have amino acid analogs the examples are important which you have to remember hydroxymethionine dl homocysteine and acetyl dl methionine so these are basically amino acids which are rumen undegradable okay so instead of giving the whole protein you can just give certain important amino acid in the form of amino acid analogs then there are certain feed processing methods then they are low uh, then you can lower the ruminal protease activity by addition of antibiotics not very practical then metal amino acid complexes so basically these are used practically zinc methionine zinc lysine manganese methionine copper lysine these are important examples here basically we will conjugate or we will chelate the important amino acid with certain metal ions okay and they will be stable in the rumen they will not be digested by the microbes then we have plant secondary metabolites like lignin, tannin and terpenoids. Here the tannin one is most important. They can ask you in the exams uh, this one. So what do we do? Tannin is an anti-nutritional factor. Okay. Tannin decreases the 
solubility of the proteins and it decreases the absorption of the proteins but we can use this property of the tannins to our advantage how we can treat the feed which such tannins which are resist, uh, resistant to the rumen digestion but when they enter into the intestine they get uh, they get digestible okay then we have uh, we can decrease the retention time in the rumen okay we can increase uh, the feed intake we can do something with the specific gravity particle size like if you are decreasing the particle size then the retention will be less like that okay and there are certain methods for the fat production you just need to know the name encapsulation and calcium salt formation so this is it for the feed processing i hope you like this video if so hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel